Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit about a new tool that is out from System76 that will allow you to flash a single ISO image across multiple USB drives simultaneously. So this is a project that is called Popsicle. It's a very easy user interface. It's uh, very intuitive out of the box, and we wanted to go ahead and have a brief look at it. So of course, here is their um, FlatHub page. So you can install this as a flat pack, which is supported by most distributions. So you should be able to grab this guy. And you simply start out by grabbing your image. You can actually do a hash between an MD5 and an SHA-256. Uh, you can select your various drives. And then it will show you the status of flashing those drives across. And then you will be complete. That's really all there is to it. Like I said, this is a System76 project. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump on over to a um, test desktop here. And I've already downloaded Linux Mint 20. Uh, so if I head on over into my downloads folder, I should see that. And we have the hashes, the 256 hashes up here on uh, on this guy. And we've went ahead and already installed Popsicle utilizing the um, Flatpak installer. And so let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like. All right, so here we are with the easy interface here. And we're going to start by choosing our image and then just navigate down to our downloads folder and choose our image. Now we can come down to our hash and we can pick whichever our hash is going to be. And then we're going to compare that to the hash that we have listed on Linux Mint's website here. And so if you're really paranoid, you can open up a, a spreadsheet and put the two side by side and do a checksum, make sure they're exactly identical on every single character. In this case, as soon as it's done, we're just going to verify the first, first few characters, last few characters, and then that should verify us enough. So here's our first few characters. Everything there looks pretty good. And then here's our last few characters, and everything there also looks good. So our checksum 256 passes. We'll move on next. All right, so there we are. We just inserted our flash drives in. Now these two flash drives are right at the end of death. And so hopefully this works. These are like can't be used for really anything else anymore. So hopefully we'll be able to burn onto them. Uh, but we'll go ahead and hit our next. And then we have to enter our password for verification. Enter my super secret password. And now we are going through the process. So it does appear that these guys are going to burn. I'll give them a few minutes here to burn. If you actually have a uh, decent flash drives, they will burn pretty quickly. Like I said, these ones here are right at the edge of death. I've been using them to test Linux distributions for a number of years now, and they really don't work. You can see, okay, they're writing 20, 25, about 30 megs per second. So it looks like they'll finish pretty quick. So we'll go ahead and come back when these are done flashing. Okay, so there we walked through the installation process, and you can see that it now says that our two drives are flashed. And so now we're done. So we have just created two identical copies across two different flash drives, and that will enable us to install whatever distribution we're using across a variety of different sources. Now, why might one want to do this? Well, we already mentioned some of the issues. Business deployment. So if you are going to be in a business and you want everybody to have the same basic workstation copy, maybe you're doing a series of computer drones, you know, all focusing on a central server and you have the first one set up, you can simply take that and flash it across all of your, your different computers. And instead of going through one by one and doing each computer one by one, you can set up a different disk uh, for each computer. You can give everybody their own desk, their own uh, ref reflash, refresh if you need to so that everybody can have their own copy. Also distributing out to families, keeping backups. You might, you might make a couple copies of what you're doing and just say, hey, this is it. Uh, so that is a lot of the reasons why you might want to use a tool like this, but it works out pretty nice. Now, let me tell you about some of the, the, um, the little caveats. I ran this on Linux Mint 20 through the Flatpak. The Flatpak on my main production computer at Linux Mint 18.3 does not work, but I have actually found that several Flatpaks on Linux Mint 18.3 don't work at this point. So that could be maybe I need to run a few more system updates again. I haven't done that for a little while.
while. Maybe it's just the system's becoming a little bit too old and a little bit unstable and upgrading to a more recent version might be a thing we look into doing in the not too distant future. So those are some of the thoughts we have. Let me know all your thoughts on this nice new tool. Have you seen it? Have you used it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.